It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Texans coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Houston Texans. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white lines. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. the goal line and no alley to be found the coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18 so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense they'll be led out by their veteran quarterback a former blue hen out of Delaware it's Joe Flacco you want to talk about a driven player partner this guy is absolutely that person he doesn't just have goals in this game he wants to be remembered among the best to play the position, and he treats every game as an audition for that. It's a lofty goal to set for yourself, but we've seen his drive lead to some impressive games from him. Perhaps another one is in store today. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. Operating off play action, Flacco. And oh, right away, he lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. The good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Here's Flacco. This is the tight end to Joku. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. down Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland Desmond King deep for Houston call that a 45 yard punt just two yards there on the return and the Texans will take over with a first and ten so out come the Texans for their opening drive leading them out a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft C.J. Stroud I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender, 
and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go. Sometimes it's end of beauty. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Stroud sets up the play action. He's got his man. It's the tight end, Brevin Jordan. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 25, here's a second down and four. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. Oh, fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. And a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now Stroud. Did he get the feet down? Yes! Touchdown! Noah Brown, a five-yard touchdown. And the Texans are on the board first here this afternoon. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stuff it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. They got it done. Fairbairn good with the extra point, And it's now a 7-0 game. Touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offensive move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. 
Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down, Flacco now. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Passing play, Flacco. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Not much happening offensively here early on. That's two drives and zero first downs. This defense, they come to play, and they're the better of the two units here so far. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. On the return, it's King. An eight-yard return there after a punt of 47. And the Texans will take over. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. But just two series in here, Charles, but everything's gone to script so far. They got a touchdown on their first drive. Their defense holds, and now they've got a chance to take a two-score lead. And to co-sign with you, exactly the start they scripted up. And really, that kind of start, that can set the tone for the game for them. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Right back to Singletary on second down. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Stroud on third down now. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On is the punter, Johnston, now as he sends this one away. Returning it is Moore. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Flacco looks to throw. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Cooper's first catch, and good for a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. They'll run on first down. It's fourth, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. Here's second and ten. Now Flacco. There's a short throw taken in by Bryant. They'll give him four yards there, and it brings up third and five now. Setting up to throw Flacco. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. 
And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. On first down, four. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Second down and eight. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. Flacco's throw taken in by Cooper here. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 19. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now a give right side. It's Ford. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Adrian Amos up to make the tackle. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Second down and six now. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. The Texans here on third down putting an extra defender in the secondary. Flacco. This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target, able to pick up another first down. Ford is going to go backwards. He'll lose yardage back to the five. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. As they've got it as we resume action. This is Ford. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Jerome Ford. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Browns are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. On that sideline, they're saying that was more like it. The first down run went backwards, that time into the end zone. And I like their little bit of courage in play calling, too. Because after an unsuccessful run, especially one where you lose yardage, you oftentimes go right to throw in the football. They came right back with a running play, and it paid off handsomely. Hopkins with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Now Houston's offense taking over again. 
Uh, Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And he is going to lose yardage here. Miles Garrett showing that athleticism as he gets in to make the play. That's a nice job there, foiling what all offenses try to do, which is control the defensive end in the running game. They want to get to the outside, and if he keeps himself free, stays on his feet, he can make a play just as he did there. Stroud is hit, and the ball is loose. But it looks like one of the DBs has it, and they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. A disappointing end in the sequence there. He was starting to turn nothing into something, and then he lost the football. And sometimes things get lost in the transition. And what I mean by that is you go from being a passer to a runner. And at a certain point, once you cross the line of scrimmage, you're strictly a runner now. There's no more downfield threat. Make sure you take care of the football while you're traversing downfield. So the fumble recovery, now Flacco to throw. Shot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Second and ten. Up the middle they go. It's four. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three. Again, they turn to four. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. Bootleg, Flacco. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now a handoff up the middle. Four. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 46 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. After he cleared the line of scrimmage, nice little hole developed. Yeah, he got great blocking right there at the start. But how about his vision, finding the open spaces and letting his feet carry him to him? To pass, Flacco. Now he's got it. Three yards is the game that time, second and goal. fancy there Charles you had three tight ends on the field they were going to run the football the defense knew it but the defense couldn't stop them and I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting they had determination on their side and they got it done here's Hopkins now for the extra point and he's got it it's now a 14-7 ball game so this drive spans seven plays. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And 
And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. That 7 0 lead of theirs short lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So, what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal. Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw complete into the hands of Schultz here. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Two yards still to go, third down now. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. A lot depend on the spot there, and he got it. But it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. So what do you do if you've got a defense to cover three trying to keep everything in front of them? The answer seems obvious. Just work those routes in front of them. This is going to be a hitch route, but he's operating in plenty of space, and he makes the catch here for a first down. They'll run on first down with Singletary, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From the 46, here's the second and eight. Singletary again. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Now second and five. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Ford. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Looking for Cooper, that's complete. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. 
And right side, they're going to go option here. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. It looked like they had the run stopped at the line of scrimmage, but the hand got up into the face mask, and the officials, they were looking for it. They spotted it. It's an easy call, too, when it's right in front of them. You see that neck twist just a little bit, and that's enough to draw the flag. On first down, Flacco. It's caught. Cooper. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. Now it's Flacco. There's a short throw taken in by Bryant. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Up the middle they go. Four. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. That'll go as a pickup of eight. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Flacco. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Here now, second and four. Here's Flacco. Over the middle, Amari Cooper. It's complete. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. just inside of the 20. 79 yards rushing for him now to this point. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter. 14 to 7. Second down and three. Flacco from the gun. To the right side and he's got more complete. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Here's Flacco. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Now Flacco. And that is incomplete. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long, then here, just nothing available. And he's got to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And that is incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Hughes. 
Houston makes it fourth down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. Hopkins' kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to so he splits the uprights and has to be a nice feeling. Right when I left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. First and 10, it's Stroud. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Now it's second and ten. Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Third and two. Stroud working out of the gun. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is gonna have a Texans first down as they get five there on third and two. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Here's Stroud. That's into the hands of Woods. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap, to stay in bounds and complete the catch. Got a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And down he'll go at the 25. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. 
Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. All we were right, certainly Coach, treated to an entertaining much, first half. We'll welcome you Both these teams with some high points three. and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. A 10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here's the Texans' offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to... The ball comes out, but this will get out of bounds. So possession will stay the same. Offensively, they're just not playing a very clean football game right now. This deficit, there's a fumble. Good news for them, at least. That went out of bounds. You're exactly right. And as they breathe a sigh of relief, you know they're looking at the scoreboard, thinking to themselves, if we turn it over there... Things could really get rough for us trying to make a comeback in this game. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And this will be a Texans first down as the tackle made here at the 36. That was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. He'll complete this one to Collins. And that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. On first down, they stick with Singletary. Taking it right down. on 12 carries for him now. So he nearly took it the distance, gets him down inside the 10 for a first and goal. I'd love to be in his head right now because is he rewarding himself for a great run or is he kicking himself because he didn't get all the way to the goal line? Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Stroud to throw it. Escaping the pressure right. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. C.J. Stroud taking it in from seven yards away. And the Texans have cut it back within a score. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with it. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead's down to a field goal at 
touchdown. Here's Fairbair now to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Setting up to throw Flacco. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Jonathan Grenard picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Now Flacco. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. Here comes third down and seven. Flacco. Can't get away, and he's taken down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Here's King. And a nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And that will come the offense as they take over. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, Offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. From the 42 now, here's second and two. They go right back to Singletary. Oh, The drive continues. It's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. On first down, here's Stroud. This one left side caught by Collins. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. They get 14 on that one, good for a Houston first down. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 41. Throwing now is Stroud. Looking left side, and he's got, and it's a fumble. And he 
he's taken down inside the 30. And the defense not able to get it. From, from a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you've probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. They know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. They run here with Singletary. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line. Because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines is extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. One of the tight ends comes in motion. Singletary again. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texas. Devin Singletary taking it in from four yards out. And the Texans have retaken a third quarter lead. The touchdown was scored by the runner, but the offensive line, they feel like it's theirs. They blocked that one up perfectly, allowed him easy access to the end zone. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. It's up and good to make it 21-17. So that drives seven plays in length, and it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Their lead, they have seen it evaporate completely after such a good first half. They've been shut down here in the third quarter. Searching for answers, trying to figure out what it's going to take to get back to where they were before. The big part of it is that sometimes you don't have to go exotic now. You go back to basics. Being able to run the football, string some things together, some effective passes, try and get a rhythm established again, and try and get back in the lead. Back in the lead, like you said, back to the basics. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Passing play, Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. The handoff to Ford up the middle. Gets past one man. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 18 more yards there and another first down. He continues to be dominant running the football. I mean, keep feeding him, right? Yeah, you should because what he's put up already is really like a two-game total. Give him a lot of credit, but give the rest of the offense credit as well. The big guys up front and the receivers on the perimeter, everyone's getting involved blocking people downfield. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And for one of the few times here today, this one's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Third and eight.
from the gun, Flacco. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you, you want to. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Second and goal from inside the five. Flacco looks to throw. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Browns have answered back with a third-quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. We always admire a guy who can go through his progressions and find the open receiver. I believe we just saw that there. And we admire him just a little bit more when it goes for a touchdown. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Well, let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. We've seen him be good so far. He's hoping to continue that trend here in quarter number three. And typically when you see guys running it this well, they see the game in slow motion, don't they? They see the cuts happen, they see the blocks happen, they feel really good about their vision, and then they use their legs to find that open space. And yeah, he's had some good help up front to boot. Miles Garrett, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Boy, every time I see speed like that off the edge, Charles, I just don't know how these offensive linemen do it. They, I would think that they would get called for holding every play, and maybe they should have been called for holding on that one. Yeah, maybe not just holding, but sometimes you end up setting back in the offensive backfield a little bit farther to try and help you with the edge. That's a penalty as well. Sometimes you overset, they'll come inside of you. That's what speed does. It disrupts an offense, and right now, you've got to pay attention to this edge rusher on every single down. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Stroud looking to throw. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. It's J.O.K. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa in there for the sack. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. They will start this drive with four. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50.
Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second down and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Ford. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. The Browns on third down, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. Now it's Flacco. That is caught, and he is going to have the Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Play action, Flacco. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Here's Flacco. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Defense! 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 They'll try the left side. Four. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. 142 yards rushing for him now on 25 carries. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator, he's going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive linemen, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try and make a big play. And not only not getting off the field on two opportunities, clock continuing to run. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. Flacco from the gun. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And the Browns are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Jonathan Grenard able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Well, this has to count as a great team effort today, but this man, he's been at the center of all of it. Really special day for any defense to have this many sacks in a game, even more so for this player. One of the best individual efforts of the season. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Ford. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go -go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Third and goal, Flacco. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So decision time now, because the field goal keeps it a one-score game. What are you thinking? Well, I'm looking at the down and distance, and that's where the issue comes in. It's not short enough that it's a no-brainer and you go for it. You have to analyze this one. To me, you take the field goal, take the points, I don't think you want to risk coming away with nothing. Hopkins' kick is good, and the drive will wind up yielding three. 
They had it first and goal. Three attempts, couldn't get it in, so they settle for three. Yeah, the field tends to shrink a little bit the closer you get to the goal line, doesn't it? It doesn't sound right. It sounds a little counterintuitive. But you run out of space to run the deep routes, so they can just sit on the shorter stuff if you're going to throw it. If you want to run it, there's just not as much space. They end up having to take three there. Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. And able to get this out to the 25. And here comes the Texans now. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now Stroud. He's going to hit his man out. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Stroud's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. And whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands. And oftentimes the receiver turns around and there's the ball. Nice completion there. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Pulled out a very strong gain of 24. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Stroud to the air on first and 10. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. Well, I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. From the 21, it's second and 10. Singletary trying the left side. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Stroud. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what would you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And this Browns defense stands tall. So he needed the short yard as Charles he elected to try to bounce it outside of the outer third unsuccessful. Sometimes those plays are stacked up by the defense and there's nowhere to go, so you have to bounce it outside. And some backs just get impatient. They want to go to where they think there's more open territory instead of going where the play was actually blocked. In any case, it didn't work here. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. 
He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Yeah, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On the ground, it's four. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now Flacco. Over the middle, Amari Cooper. It's complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. They run with four. And he's going to have a Browns first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. It's Ford. And he will have a Browns first down. It has been a struggle, but it's looking like that'll be the one to seal a victory. Take a knee. Ball at the twenty four and a second and eleven. defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far they're not putting up much of a fight if they don't get a stop here soon this game could be over for them to an ego's flacco and that should be it yeah it's fun to kneel down in front of your own crowd but when you go on the road that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. 
How happy are they? Uh, I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch.